Welcome back. It's D-Day. This is the worst Monday in the history of Mondays. I had to shave for the first time in six weeks because we've foolishly decided to do another season of this show. It's the first day back at school, which is probably going to be the greatest super spreader event since the Ruby Princess passengers got off the boat in Sydney last year. And anti-vaxxers are hitting fever pitch lunacy because starting today, they can't go anywhere without proof that they've had the jab. Welcome back indeed. Could you think of a worse way to endear people to your cause than stopping traffic on the Mitchell Freeway in peak hour on the first day of school? Nasty. Well, there's a new sheriff in town. Yes. Apparently there's a new arm of law enforcement in Western Australia. We now have the WA Police, the Corruption and Crime Commission, Australian Federal Police, Border Force and Common Law Sheriffs one of whom issued papers to real police today requesting that they arrest Mark McGowan. Yep, the protesters are out and about. Here's a bit of arithmetic for kids on the first day of school. WA's population is 2.68-ish million people. The Department of Education says there are about 410,000 school kids kindy through to year 10, all spitting COVID at each other as we speak. So roughly speaking, 2.2 million West Aussies over the age of 16. Probably less because we haven't counted babies and toddlers. We know that more than 97% of West Australians over 16 have had at least one jab, so 3% haven't. So there's fewer than 70,000 unvaxxed people out there in the whole state. Probably only 50 or 60,000 in Perth. That's pretty incredible. Not many to go. Yeah, I wonder how many of those hardcore anti-vaxxers actually ended up getting the jab, unwillingly, but they're probably protesting against the mandate. Well, they had a small win today. McGowan has backflipped on swimming pools. Oh, he's got to hold it. He's moving a little too fast. Oh, he punched through. On January 16, the government said the unvaxxed would be banned from public pools effective January 31. It's now emerged the health department quietly scrapped that rule on January 29. Why would they do that? Well, the government has said... Pools are often used for therapy purposes and provide other health benefits, in particular in regional areas where pools are known to reduce rates of ear, chest and skin infections, particularly in more vulnerable cohorts. Which means we are purposefully letting unvaccinated people soak their riddled bodies right next to West Australians who have a much higher risk of dying from COVID because of pre-existing medical issues. That is the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Who is writing this health advice? You get whiplash trying to keep up. Last day of January and McGowan already looks like he needs a holiday. I thought my Monday was bad. He's been busted gilding the lily about those 300 new hospital beds that were going to save the hospital system from collapse. Because two dozen aren't new at all, they're actually existing private beds repurposed for the COVID. He's got big business moving over east in protest over his quarantine policy. People like Richard Goida say it's too hard to do business from Perth at the moment. Also, what's the point of being a millionaire if you've got a holiday at Ledge Point? (laughs) And on top of all that, McGowan woke up this morning to discover COVID's about to go through the mining industry like herpes at Leavers Week. And you were just telling me there's more bad news ahead for McGowan. Sorry, Mark, but your week is about to get worse. There's a new book coming out on Thursday that's going to make the Premier sweat. Actually, not just McGowan, every politician, business person, journalist and bureaucrat is going to shit themselves. Oh no. Who wrote it? This guy. Most people won't recognise him, but if you're over 50, you might. It's Julian Grill, who was a minister in Brian Burke's government in the 1980s. He's a former Labor Party right faction power broker who knows where the bodies are buried. And in his new book, he doesn't just tell everyone where the graves are, he reveals who put them in the ground. Jeez, we haven't heard from Burke and Grill in a while. A trip down memory lane. They own the front page when the Corruption and Crime Commission went after their lobbying business in the mid-2000s. The Triple C bugged their phones and their houses. They put a surveillance camera in a light post outside Julian's home to see who he was meeting and at what time of day. <laughs> And what they discovered rocked the state because it turned out that Brian and Julian were very good at getting public servants and politicians to do their bidding. So good, in fact, that Alan Carpenter had to sack a fair chunk of his front bench. Ten years before that, Grill was in the headlines for an even bigger one, the WA Inc. Royal Commission. Since all that, he and Brian have gone to ground. Turns out Julian spent his quiet time getting a lot of shit off his liver and into a 600-page book. Who's in it? Everyone. You've obviously had an advanced copy. Should some people be very worried? 
let me put it this way. I get on pretty well with these two blokes, but that didn't stop Grill from publishing a confidential email that I sent to him a few years ago. I thought we were friends. Now, if he does that to me, imagine what he's going to do to his enemies, of which there are many. Mark McGowan will be worried because guess who he sought political advice from when he arrived in WA as a young Navy lawyer in the 1990s? Brian Burke and Julian Grill, the same pair that were expelled from the ALP and who were banned from talking to Labor ministers. Now, Mark isn't the only Premier mentioned. Dowding, Lawrence, Court, Gallup, Carpenter, Barnett, they're all in there with his views about who they are as people. Grill turns the tables on the journos who have pursued him over the years. He spends page after page eviscerating lawyers, judges and academics. He goes after the cops. He divulges intimate details of the business deals he was involved with, including with this guy. Come on, challenge me. Don't worry, Andrew. He does. Grill reckons he played a critical role in FMG becoming the third force in iron ore. He and Brian used their lobbying power to get the train on the tracks, he says and he's publishing the confidential emails, he says proves it. People in Canberra on both sides are going to squirm when they read this book, especially this guy. Those leadership aspirations might take a dent there, Bill. Even St Ben Wyatt, another Labor politician who kissed the ring when nobody was looking, comes in for a bit of a beating. Who cops the most flack? Former Attorney General Jim McGuinty, who's been a factional enemy of Burke and Grill for decades and who created the Triple C. Grill doesn't miss him on any page. And Brigadier Michael Silverstone, who was running the Triple C during the lobbyist inquiry but was in the Navy before he became a corruption buster. Grill dissects his role in the Children Overboard Affair and also the Tampa Affair as part of a broad character assassination that will surely have the Brigadier searching for defamation lawyers on Facebook Marketplace. You'd know some defamation lawyers. I haven't been sued all year. One show down in season two of Up Late, 170 to go. Ah, shit. Here we go again. I'm Ben Harvey. For more Up Late, click the subscribe button below.